voice of thanksgiving is heard on high as you celebrate the faithfulness of God. Thank him and do it from the depth of your heart. Make sure you are giving quality thanks. You are giving praise. You are giving glory. You are giving honor. You are giving adoration. You are celebrating God. You are celebrating God. You are celebrating God. Father, we have come today to give you praise, to give you glory, to give you honor, and to give you adoration. These testimonies are your doings. They are marvelous in our eyes. And for it, we say thank you. Blessed be your holy name. Now begin to ask the Lord to speak to you this morning. Lord, I've come before you. I'm in your presence this morning. And I ask that you will speak to me. Send your word to me today. And by your word, let there be light. Let darkness lose its hold. Empower me by your word. And engrace me by your word. Enable me by your word. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now lift your hand and give thanks. And give glory unto his name. Celebrate him as worthy of all the praise and glory. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we have come this morning with gratitude for all that you have done. We thank you for your goodness towards each one of us. We thank you, Lord, for the testimonies of your mighty hand at work in our midst. We thank you, Lord, for the answers you have given to all of our prayers. We give you all the praise and all the glory. And now, Lord, our eyes are upon you. We ask that you will speak to us this morning. Let your word transform each one of us. We give you thanks and praise for it. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. Give Jesus a big hand and please be seated in his presence. It is my year of breaking limits. Our line of exhortation for this week has been captioned, no church grows without a people on the go. And we have come to establish thus far that one of the fundamental tasks that Christ has given to his church is to go to the world and preach the gospel. It is called the Great Commission, and that is because there is no task or assignment that supersedes it in, in, in importance. Jesus said in Mark chapter 16 and verse 15, he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. In the book of Matthew chapter 28 and beginning from verse 19, he said, there go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. So we discover that this is principle in the heart of God. In fact, you can call it the heartbeat of God for the world. And this is why it's important for us to recognize that if this is God's heartbeat, then you and I must make it our front burner task. It must be the priority for everyone that claims to be a child of God. But we discovered that when it comes to the subject of advancing any product, it is aggressive marketing that is key to great sales. You see, the commodity of the kingdom is salvation. And our preaching of the gospel is the marketing. And it is the aggressive nature of the marketing that determines the output when it comes to sales. In Luke chapter 14, verse 22 and verse 23, we find Jesus giving a parable. And he said, the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, but there is still room. There is still space. He said, And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. In other words, when you look at that term that was used, compel is not invite. In that parable, the Bible said that they were invited, but every one of them began to make excuse. Invitation may be met with excuse, but compulsion will always come with results. The Bible shows us there that after he compelled them, the house was filled. So it takes compelling 
aggressive marketing to see great sales of this commodity of salvation. In other words, if we are going to see souls saved and saved in their masses, we must go not just inviting them, but compelling them. It is that compelling action that brings about mass salvation. And I pray that for each one of us, the grace of God will be made available for us to effectively compel souls to Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. But it's important that we recognize that we must keep sowing the seed of the word as we reach out to the lost and watering the same by prayer if we must continue to experience supernatural church growth. So we see that there are two vital things. The sowing of the seed of the word and the watering of the same in prayer. In Luke chapter 8 verse 11 we are told there that the seed is the word of God. What seed is that? The seed is the word of God and we are told in 1 Peter 1 23 that being born again of incorruptible seed. So the word that brings salvation is referred to as a seed. And we are told in the book of 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 6, it said, I planted, that is seed sowing, Apollos watered, and then God gave the increase. So there is the planting and there is the watering. However, it's important for us to recognize that the planting refers to the sowing of the word and the watering refers to prayer. The engagement of these two components is what brings about the increase. Let's look at two effects of prayer when it comes to engaging on the harvest field. Two effects. Number one is prayer determines the soil in which the seed is planted. Prayer determines the soil in which the seed is planted. And then two, prayer determines the condition in which the seed is planted. These are two vital things that determine the outcome of every natural seed sowing. And that is also what determines the outcome of the spiritual seed of God's word sown. What do I mean? In the book of Luke chapter 8, beginning from verse 5 to, 13, 5 to 15, we are told there concerning this sower. He said he went out to sow the, sow the seed. And when he sowed the seed, there were four different kinds of ground upon which the seed fell. One, we are told, the seed fell on the wayside. Two, we are told, the seed fell among, on, upon the rocky ground. And three, we are told, the seed fell among thorns. And then four, the seed fell on good ground. According to scripture, only one of those four produced fruits. And that was the seed that fell on good ground. What do those four grounds represent? One, we are told that the first seed that fell um, on the wayside, it said as soon as the seed was sown, immediately, it said the enemy comes to take the seed. The birds of the air come to take the seed. They come to steal the word. They come to silence the word. We discover that every time we go out winning souls, there are various voices seeking to silence the voice of God's word. The Bible makes it very clear to us that when we go out winning souls, there are these voices. The voices will come in form of contrary human voices and contrary demonic influences. Human voices coming to silence what God is saying. That's why you discover sometimes you are speaking to a person and the person seems to be yielding to what you are saying. And somebody else comes and said, let's go, let's go, let's go. A human voice trying to silence the voice of the word of God. But the Bible says that we are to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring to captivity every thought, every voice, every contrary influence. So we discover that if we are going to see souls escape from being a wayside kind of soil, then we need the altar of prayer. Number two kind of soil we see is what the Bible called the rocky ground. And that is the soil that starts with excitement but dies out of lack of consistency. A seed is sown. But the Bible says as soon as the seed springs up, it has no root in itself 
and therefore it withers away and it dies these are those ones that they hear the word of god but after receiving the word they are met with all kinds of resistance of situations and circumstances and as a result the word is not allowed to bear fruit you see, we must understand that those that we come across on the harvest field they are met with various circumstances very various situations that are trying to silence the voice of the word and we must pray against it we must stand against it we must pray and engage against those confusions and those manipulations shout hallelujah the third kind of soil we saw was the thorns and those are the ones that are met with all manner of cares and concerns all kinds of cares and concerns different distractions he wants to follow god but at the same time he wants to follow money he wants to follow god at the same time he doesn't want to leave the things of the world different distractions here and there remember the bible said concerning those that were compared they said they began to make excuses all of those excuses were human excuses issues that were personal concerns all things that were personal pursuits distracting from the pursuit of god and his word we must pray against it i've discovered that when we stand on the altar of prayer we can cancel the excuses of men we can silence the excuses of men we can stand against people making excuse i remember some time ago after meditating on that word where he said they all began to make excuse he said with one accord and i began to understand how that people stand to make excuses and those excuses are demonically mechanized but people think they are physical so i began to pray when i will go lord i come against every excuse every human excuse those are the cares of the world seeking to choke the world and i discovered as we prayed against the excuses the excuses began to die out because the altar of prayer is where we can silence the excuse what are we saying the wayside can be turned to good ground the rocky soil can be turned to good ground the thorns can be turned to good ground but the instrument for the conversion is prayer and that is why we must recognize our engagement on the altar of prayer brings about the determination of the kind of soil into which the seed is sown but not only do we determine the soil but the condition of the soil which is why we water our seed sown with prayer paul says something he said my little children of whom i travail again in birth until christ is formed in you until the fruits of christ are shown in you so we have the responsibility not only of determining the soil but of conditioning the seed for the production of fruits and that is why you and i must recognize that the altar of prayer can never be neglected when it comes to the salvation and the establishment of souls which yields in the growth of the church we must of necessity engage tirelessly on the altar of prayer that is why like i love the testimony that was read to us that individual said i realize that i must not only pray i must go i must bring i must nurture and establish and when i do it as a must then my blessing is a must the moment you make it a must for you god makes it a must for him to release your blessing i see each one of us experiencing that blessing coming from god in the name of jesus christ somebody believe it say loud amen will you rise on your feet to me this morning and lift your voice before the lord and take from god grace lord i receive grace for effectiveness effectiveness on the harvest field effectiveness on the altar of prayer effectiveness lift your voice and pray from the depth of your heart lift your voice and pray from the depth of your heart make sure you are praying in faith you are praying with confidence you are praying with full assurance you are calling upon the name of the lord my father my god i receive from you this morning the grace for effectiveness that as i pray what used to be a wayside heart will be turned to a good ground heart that as i pray what used to be a rocky ground heart will become a good ground heart that as i pray what used to be a thorny heart will become a good ground heart for the seed of the word of god to take root downwards and to bear fruit upwards that as i pray the water of the spirit will begin to fall upon the heart of every individual 
causing the seed to bring forth fruit and causing them to be established in the kingdom lift your voice and pray and ask god for grace ask god for grace make sure you are praying with all your heart make sure you are praying with all your heart make sure you are praying with all your heart engaging the entirety of all that is within you as you call upon the name of the lord this morning my father my god i ask of you grace i ask of you grace for effectiveness for effectiveness on the harvest field going to the highways and the hedges going to the streets and the lanes and standing effectively upon the altar of prayer in the name of jesus christ now lift your hand and lift your voice and begin to give glory unto god this morning father we say thank you blessed be your holy name in jesus precious name we have prayed why not speak to god specifically concerning all that god has brought your way lord their heart shall not be wayside it shall not be stony their heart will not be thorny it will be good ground the word must bring forth fruit in their lives both those that you have spoken about spoken to and the ones you will speak to today lord every one of them their heart is converted now their heart is converted now their heart is converted now they will receive the word the word will bring forth fruit they will receive the word the word will bring forth fruit in the name of jesus christ they shall be established they shall be settled they shall be planted they shall be rooted in the name of jesus christ make sure you are praying from the depth of your heart make sure you are engaging you are calling upon god asking for him to intervene right now only god has the key that opens the heart of man the heart of the king is in the hand of the lord and it turns it whatsoever way he will therefore in the name of jesus let the heart be torn from whatever its present condition is into good ground to receive the word and to bring forth fruit to receive the word and to bring forth fruit are you praying that prayer pray from the depth of your heart even as i go forth today everyone i come across let their hearts open up as good grounds let their hearts open up as good ground in the name of jesus let their heart open up as good ground in the name of the lord jesus christ lift your hand and lift your voice and give glory to god for the answer to the prayer in jesus precious name we have prayed as we have decreed so shall it be in jesus precious name somebody believe say loud amen. amen don't forget please we have our water baptism taking place today eight o'clock is the time and across all of our various provinces ensure that you are there those who are yet to be baptized by immersion you have not been immersed in water since you believed if you baptized before you were born again that's not baptism it is after you are born again that you are baptized in water so if you have not yet been ensure that you are there and the lord bless you in the name of the lord jesus christ please let's take note of this announcement pay very close attention details of our service tomorrow will be made available later today however please take note all zona district provincial and other accredited centers are to prepare to hold services tomorrow that is um, tomorrow sunday and each one of us should look out for further information that will be coming from the church as it concerns this. Praise the Lord. Uh, this siege is going to be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. I said it will be broken. Also, please take note, consequently, the Mother's Day celebration that was scheduled for tomorrow has been suspended. It will come up at a later time. The details will be revealed to us in due course. Everyone ensure that you are in the service tomorrow at the various locations that you'll be informed of all the zones will be engaged all the districts and all the provincial centers along with some of some other accredited centers that will come our way so please take note and look out for information that will come our way later today be blessed in the name of jesus christ somebody believe say loud amen, amen. lift your hand lift your voice and give glory to god this morning give glory to god this morning give glory to god this morning in the name of jesus christ this day is declared blessed it is a productive day for you in the name of jesus so shall it be it's a day of blessing a day of testimonies a day of heavenly speed in Jesus' precious name. You believe it, say loud, amen.
take advantage of the day go around advertising jesus jesus is the solution to all of human conditions therefore advertise him and as you do he will honor you in return in jesus precious name let's share the goodness together in fellowship surely god's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the lord forever amen peace it is my year of breaking limits then what eyes have not seen nor ears heard shall be your experience all through the year 2020 congratulations amen and amen congratulate somebody as you go and be blessed